uh, mic is in your hand. The podium is with you, Dr. Suresh. Waiting to hear uh, from you. Well, I need help from the guys. I'm not there yet. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I think the crowd has become thinner, uh, probably secondary to hypoglycemia. And we had quite a lot of interesting talks. And uh, uh, the challenge is the time. And uh, I, we had, we are running almost 45 minutes delay. I'll try to keep it to the point. And uh, now, can we start? Thank you. Um, so, actually, uh, with uh, the, uh, the technology, what got got? Um, with the technology, what we got, uh, the treatment modalities in diabetic management has gone up leaps and bounces, and we are going to witness um, a lot of, uh, along with the therapeutics, which we've been seeing for past 15 years or so. Before that, metformin and sulfonylureas were the drugs, and then the, when the glitazones and the DPP-4s, SGLT2s, and incretins, and the journey of insulin branded, uh, the quality of insulin has improved. So last 15 years or so, since uh, uh, the training days, it has uh, uh, come up in a big way. So that is from the therapeutic side always being there, but the technology side has also been leaps and bounds. So now why I gave that introduction is um, it is very important that we should not uh, forget the old things when the things are improving. And I'm going to give a corporate talk today. Uh, it's about uh, how not to forget about the sulfonylureas, which is uh, being one of the key treatments and uh, whatever the new drugs comes into pipeline. The sulfonylurea has got a key role uh, when, especially when you got a uh, uh, lot of challenges in managing the A1C and then uh, dealing with the complications of a diabetic patient. So you really need a drug which has been well known and well studied and uh, uh, being with us for a lot of uh, this thing and cheap and all these flavors together, uh, we should not forget these group of drugs. So now, as I, as I mentioned, the evidence is changing with the technology and therapeutics coming in, but uh, the guidelines are guidelines always, but it is not mandatory to follow. But what are the challenges and what is the rationale of getting a guideline? It should be simple and practical and to achieve the goals and also the best treatment often provided uh, for a person in even a villages. Uh, the clinician can implement and directly extrapolate uh, the guideline and then use it for their patient. So, and then eventually it should be for the well-being of the patient. So, guidelines uh, recommending the oral therapy is um, with the hypoglycemic agent as a second line. Uh, there are quite a lot of guidelines will support uh, sulfonylurea as the second line, which is still there, and uh, we all do that in our practice. So even the uh, the gliptins and SGLT2 come in generic. A uh, lot of us uh, in clinic, what I do as well, uh, just to get the sulfonylurea in board. So the challenges is just the treating uh, diabetes is challenging. I'm not here to uh, start the thing from beginning, but uh, optimizing a diabetic drug or financial thing, access to healthcare, all are going to be key areas in um, uh, 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 this thing. So if you see the previous four uh, uh, talks, it's all being about uh, adherence, compliance, and cost. Quite a lot of things have been discussed. If you put all these things together, and that is the challenges that uh, type 2 diabetic. And we should be uh, two things. One, uh, it should not be glucocentric, and it should be patient-centric. So uh, two things that we have to learn or um, interpret uh, when you start managing the patient. So it should be patient-centric. It shouldn't be glucocentric. So consider a decision and, and also make a sad decision. So if you're dealing with a vascular surgeon or uh, the, with multiple comorbidities, you're dealing with a nephrologist so, and also a diabetic specialist nurse or an educator with you, there may be practical challenges that can't go and get the insulin done and quite a lot of other things. So it is a sad decision. Adopt to your patient and go for the patient-centric approach. 1% A1C, this slide you might have seen in 10,000 lectures in the past. So 1% A1C will lead to quite a lot of micro and macrovascular disease. I won't go into the details, but you really need to intensify the treatment. You have to intensify the treatment to get the benefits quite early, and then, therefore, the complications are prevented, and it has to be a long journey. So treatment intensification should be adopted 
and we know there is a big clinical inertia in that area where you start with metformin, stay with metformin and stay there completely. But on the other hand, I'll show you some exciting data. So to prove that when you add on a combination therapy, then how you achieve the target, not only achieving the target, but less hypoglycemia and less complications that happens. And along with that, you achieve the target. So uh, the uncontrolled treatment intensification should be adapted, uh, uh, achieving the target A1C. So this is a scale. It is not to be uh, a rigidly applied scale. You can just uh, learn from it and then apply it accordingly. You don't need to strictly follow. It's not a gospel. Just continue and following it. So disease duration, when it goes long standing, you have to become less stringent. So when the important comorbidities, again, when it goes uh, too much of a comorbidities, then you have to go less stringent. So if you got a, a renal failure or cardiac failure, quite a lot of other uh, comorbidities are there. You have to go less stringent. You should not go with a big bang. Now, patient preference also plays a big role. In fact, in the chronic diseases, uh, we talked about skin conditions early, but there are a lot of chronic conditions um, like um, uh, diabetes. You have to involve the patient. So ideally we don't have time 70 people sitting in our clinic outside and then we don't have a time what i do is i create a patient education for a monthly once and that's when i get uh, uh, more inputs from the patient saying that oh uh, i am a carpenter i can't do this thing i'm a driver i can't do so you involve them in the five minutes what you got in your op to get maximum and then the rest of the things you arrange a forum where you spend time and they spend time and then you can uh, get more into patient preferences because that is very 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 important and research support system is very important a lot of companies are now providing it and it's hats off to indian companies whatever said and done the way they provide uh, patient resources persons yes they need to sell their insulin everybody is into business but there are a lot of good intention to it they are coming up with patient-oriented service uh, and we have to clinicians sometimes we have, have, we have to make use of it i'll just touch base on a clinical scenario so so far in the five or six slides what i've shown uh, the the challenges what we face in diabetic management but if you come to the real life scenario this is the patient sitting in front of you metformin two grams is done uncontrolled a1c eight percent and diabetic dyslipidemia is there what is the next line of treatment alternative therapy i mean technology a lot of people are using now smbg is being used we all have to use all that but practically just to get to all the people down the line in villages what do you do the guidelines i mentioned about the challenges in guidelines in the first slide but if you go with the guidelines more than 1.5 any time is there so ADA, uh, AACE, RSSDI, all the guidelines are there. The metformin and sulfonylurea is the most uh, important cost-effective therapy. So this is the study design. Um, you can see almost 941 stage patient type 2 followed up for three months. And glimipride and metformin combination has produced amazing results. I won't go into the details, but you can see it's a simple thing, but it's very well tolerated. We know we use it in front of our eyes every day, and that is the result. So you can be reassured we got science behind it in a big way in Indian patients. This is like a dual therapy with glimipride and metformin. Those are the dose areas. So you can start with the small dosage if you're not confident. The 0.5s are available, which is not available in many countries. 0.5 is available with metformin. Already you got metformin on board. Patient is well tolerating. You don't want to go to 3 gram or 2.5 gram. So you go into the combination therapy with small dose of uh, this thing. So the hypoglycemia rate and the weight gain rate is very, very less. So you see uh, the frequency uh, the, of severe hypoglycemia with glimipride uh, was um, uh, uh, with compared to glibenclamide, which is the long-acting the days of chlorpropamide, tolbutamide, and glibenclamide, all these, like, I tell to my patient, you got a four-track road, you drive in a bullock cart, you want to do that, you can do sort of thing. But it is not, uh, so sometimes you have to uh, put it to the patient thinking, uh, I am okay with the Dianil. I'm, I'm sure it is also a product of a company, but Dianil or the glibenclamide days uh, definitely it's gone when the new molecules are available of sulfonylurea. These are the forums where the clinicians who are stuck to the practice of glibenclamide 
should have an impact and then try to change the practice because um, not that the corporate talk I'm doing, but it is just a way to improve the quality of care of our patients. So less hypoglycemia and less weight gain. Uh, and then when it's compared with uh, gliptins, I'll show you the data uh, later uh, with um, with compared with linagliptin, uh, the trial showed that effectiveness is still there with the sulfonylurea, which is much more cheaper and being used for so many years as compared to with the gliptin. So when you uh, see the frequency of hypoglycemia with glimipride when compared with glibenclamide, uh, the, it is very, very less and also fewer hypoglycemia compared to uh, 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 when you compare it with six versus 38 episodes away. That is a huge uh, difference. And also, incident of hypoglycemia with glimipride and citagliptin remains the same as I mentioned. Uh, and then, what are the things that is discussed in all the forums about sulfonylurea, hypoglycemia, and weight gain? But if you look at it, the initial treatment with glimipride, there is a decrease in body weight and uh, body mass index than treatment with glibenclamide. That is reassuring, isn't it? So, we know these long-acting ones will get the insulin out in a big way very irrationally so that you get chance of getting more uh, uh, weight gain. So the guide study also reported uh, stable weight with mean changes uh, with glimipride. So this is the thing I was talking about earlier. Uh, this Carolina trial with CVOT was the endpoint. Nobody's dare to compare a gliptin with a sulfonylurea, but they've done it. And that the point is that it is both are effective. The weight change, the A1C dropped more rapidly with glimipride. But the end of the trial baseline around, that is the thing. We are not glucocentric, yes. But the glucose control is very, very important, especially in our patients. Glucose control is very, very important. So how you do by achieving that along with getting less uh, side effects, there is no significant uh, difference overall in glycemic control. But, however, the difference is very, very prominent. That gets your patient in your side. When they see the difference very hugely, they are motivated more and they'll uh, be more encouraged to do whatever you want to say. Uh, so they will listen to what you say. So it says the efficacy of glimipride in the early treatment period and superior uh, uh, durability uh, for a very long time. So it is very safe to start initially and then to sustain it for a very long time. So this is the uh, diagram that shows the beneficial effects of glimipride with metformin. So it is well tolerated. So what else you need? Uh, you are um, having, uh, I don't know, iPhone. You got iPhone, what you want? You want a quality, you want it to be secure and you want it to be working very well and you, you want to be user friendly. I think if you compare a pill, um, you can have the effectiveness more and then comparative safety is there and also uh, blood sugar control, which is one of the primary things. We're not talking about centricity, but we, we have to control the blood sugar after all. Um, then the therapeutic strategy so that we can add on another drug if it needs to be when it's uh, adequately done. So um, the legacy effect uh, we know from UKPDS data and then the data that has been followed up for many years, uh, the legacy effect is there. So uh, uh, if you look at the long-term protection of uh, development of micro and macrovascular disease, and uh, it has got a huge uh, uh, benefit uh, in terms of applying and getting the glycemic level down. So long-term protection against the cardiovascular, um, even after discontinuation of treatment is there with sulfonylurea, which is much more reassuring. Uh, so in case, for example, after some time you want to discontinue. In US, what is happening is, with invention or getting more into data and AI is coming in, uh, Lot of, uh, I mean, uh, we attended one of the things briefly. Rusha can tell uh, with the database thing. Uh, now, if they discontinue one drug through some preventive method, then that is a huge benefit for the insurance company. And they'll pass on that benefit to clinician and to the company who can provide that. So you get the point. So glucose control is very, very, very important so that in future India also is developing in a big way. There are a lot of potential for other people to come in into a clinical area. When you do a good work in controlling the blood sugar, we will be all getting rewards. So uh, early combination have complementary modes of action. 
and promising agents for altering the course of disease. So we have to do it and we have to combine the drugs um, as a monotherapy, second line, triple line, quadruple therapy. So you can pretty much use it anywhere. So that is the one huge benefit. Uh, I still use it with people with insulin. Uh, there are a lot of people stop sulfonylurea when insulin is there. My point is, if you got uh, uh, gliptin with metformin combination or sulfonylurea with metformin combination, you added a gliptin and still A1C is 8, you want to add on a basal insulin, why do I stop the sulfonylurea? You, in spite of having all that, you are having uh, bad glucose control, so add a basal insulin to it, 4 or 6 units comfortable and then you can add on whatever you want as a, a basal bolus or uh, uh, add on to one big meal, you can add on something. So uh, the legacy effect um, is going to be very important. So even in Ramadan or CVD, anywhere you can use uh, these group of drugs. So be smart, expert recommend. I think it's from Dr. Sarita Bajaj team. Uh, this is uh, published as a poster. So this is a evidence showing a 24 weeks RCT, addition of uh, glimipride to basal insulin, resulting in improved efficacy than using basal insulin alone. So what happens is when you add a sulfonylurea, the uh, unit request uh, reduction is almost by four units, which is uh, four unit four percentage, which is a huge volume in terms of uh, the units that is required, and that will. Uh, save a lot of money, even if you take 700 uh, rupees for a 300 uh, unit uh, insulin, if you cut on by 10-20%, that is a huge benefit for the patients if you add on a cheaper drug of uh, sulfonylurea. So again, when you don't use it, that the insulin dose goes up. So um, I'm almost end of it, that's another three minutes or so. Uh, so what I've discussed uh, in the last few minutes or so is the initially the guidelines, the guidelines are the one which has got huge challenges. It has to take a lot of things into consideration before uh, uh, using, and you should not strictly follow the guidelines. On the other hand, you can uh, uh, use the guidelines to improve your clinical practice to produce an effective blood sugar. And I've showed you uh, good data to show that uh, after the metformin with the clinical case scenario, uh, that metformin adding along a sulfonylurea to it, it not only produces uh, good results, and I've showed you data to show when it compared to the older drugs of sulfonylurea, the hypoglycemia and the weight gain is less. And I also compared to gliptin uh, in Carolina trial, the effectiveness and the initial blood sugar drop is much, and then the overall uh, blood sugar control is very good uh, when you compare these two drugs. So. And then I've also showed you the data showing that these group of drugs can be sulfonylurea with metformin combination can be used from a low dosage where the side effects are less and then try to increase according to your uh, response of the patient. And also uh, to show these drugs can be used as first line, second line, third line and any special situations like uh, Ramadan and other things. Um, so just to summarize, Metformin monotherapy is very, uh, uh, very much still the first line drug, even though the recent ADA guidelines have come up with something uh, uh, that may not, that's a bit controversial, but metformin will be still the drug to be started with. Uh, that is, uh, might not be effective in all the patients. We need to put on something, uh, a slight dose of sulfonylurea to combine with. And the early combination therapy was found to be more effective uh, in terms of uh, reducing the micro and macrovascular complications. And the glimipride and metformin, I've showed you quite a lot of data to show mechanism of action, compare with safety and tolerability, and uh, management of uncontrolled diabetes needs to be early, and intensification has to be good with the combination therapy. Hope I've finished another one minute more. Thank you.